In this scene, we're going to create the actual backdrop. Well, some of them, the buildings, in other words. Again, I would probably suggest getting some good textures from cgtextures.com. And again, this is, I like using multiple buildings because it just makes things nice and easy. So we do that to make sure there's the specularity down to zero. We create a new texture. I'm going to make an image. I'm going to load the image up. There we go. So that's the image here, which you can see. Now, the, this image has an alpha channel. It's a PNG. And we're going to use this alpha channel just to get rid of this backdrop. The problem, however, is the fact that the, the plane has an alpha channel of its own. So if we try and superimpose this image on top of the plane, then what's going to happen is the entire alpha is just going to go to 1 anyway because of the alpha channel on the plane. So what we need to do is turn on transparency and put the alpha of the plane down to 0. Make sure transparency is checked. In this way, then what we can do is just superimpose the alpha channel that and we do that by under influence checking alpha there so that the the alpha channel is kept from the original image and the alpha channel of the the plane doesn't inf interfere with it and as you can see here we've got the outline nicely and of course just to show it we add a point lamp and we can see the texture there Yeah, that's looking good. Now, all we really have to do f to create the next one is just to duplicate it. And if we go, we have to rename it. Of course, we need to do a c we need to do a duplication of the texture and the material and everything like that. So we have two. Right now, so I'm going to load another image, and it's going to be that one there. Yeah. And so. We already have the alpha channel set up for the first one, all of that. All we need to do is duplicate it again to create the next one. Right, uh, da, da, yeah. So make a copy of that material and save that. And I'm going to load up our final image. That one. I save it. And here we have our three buildings really quick and easy way looking good yeah the the quality of this one isn't particularly good uh... it's because i rushed it a bit if i'm honest and you can you can see some of the alpha has not been done very well but you know you're driving past it in a car it doesn't really matter all that much when you think of it okay so that's our three buildings done so it's time to move on to the road. So new layer here, and I'm just gonna add, add a plane. I'm gonna scale it on the x-axis, and it's gonna cover an entire segment of one of the, of the roads. So scale the y as well. So I'm gonna create a new material for this uh, road mat, and also a new texture for it road well, image no yeah road text I'm going to set the type to an image let's load that image now I'm going to extrude this entire shape to make it the road 3D it's about there there we go because um, I mean whoever had of a TD, 2D road and I'm going to turn the specularity down to zero um, right, so I'm just going to take a look at that. So add a lamp, and we can have a look at the texture. Looking good. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is add an, an array modifier. So what I'm going to do is extrapolate the road, so it's much, much, much longer. So I can add as many segments of roads as, as I want to. The only problem is the the little lines on the road. There's two of them for each segment, and they're a bit too small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to half the um, Y size. So we want five. 
And now we have one, one line, one and a half lines, in fact, per segment. So I need to get rid of this half line. And what I'm going to do for that is just change the offset. Not 0 0.5, 0 0.75. There we go. So I'm going to change the offset to 0 0.75, and we get one line per segment. <coughs> so that's all fitting nicely. Right. So I can change the number of segments in the array modifier. But I mean, what real use is this? I mean, why don't I just, you know, in edit mode, go into edit mode and extend the road? Well, the answer is, if I had a curve, if I had a Bezier curve, then what I can do is, I'll just set this up, I'll straighten this out and scale it up a bit. There we go. Make a couple of points. Let's control click to do that. Drag it up. There we go. So I've now got a, a line, I've got a curve here. And if I add a curve modifier to the road, set that as the curve. And if I move the road along the curve, we can see that it actually follows the path of the curve. Now, if I line this up, and we can see it textured. If I align this up and increase the number of segments, then we can see that the road then follows perfectly this line. So by using a combination of the array modifier and the uh, curve modifier, what we can do is create really good roads really quickly and easily. However, as you can see, when we play the game, we lose the texture. Now the reason for this is actually the texture coordinates. When we um, added the modifier, the the texture coordinates were actually remapped. So if I have a look at the texture, we can see the coordinates now are generated. If I change it to anything else, basically, you know, like object or uh, global, then we can see that it's still retained in game. However, we generated it's not. So what I need to do is do things the old-fashioned way. Um, I'm going to UV map the road. So to start off with, I'm going to select all my vertices, all my faces, and I'm going to go into the uh, UV editing layout. Make sure everything's selected. I'm going to hit U, unwrap. And all I'm going to do is just load the image of the road. So there we have our road segment. It's all you know ready there. And if I go back to the default view, and I set the coordinates from generated to UV, not much has really changed. I think the quality changes slightly. I think there's a decrease in the quality, and, it, and the mapping goes weird underneath and things. But if we run it in game, we can see, there it is. The texture's there, and it's working. I'll just add a couple of lights. So you can see the road better. So the, you know, the the really really great thing about curves is the fact that they're not limited to two dimensions. So I can add a hill to the road, and all that involves me doing is just extending the number of segments and changing the curve. So there we have a hill in our road. And another light here. Really, really easy to do. Yeah, so you can create really complicated and really bendy and all sorts of things, roads, and not have to worry about um, what, you know, making it in edit mode and things like that. The only thing is, if you have a look at the underside of the road, the mapping has gone really weird. So make sure you get your road the right way around. So we're nearing the end of the tutorial now. We've got our, we've made our um, um, street lamp. Yeah, looks pretty nice. We have made our buildings, all three of them, ready to be put in game. And finally, we've made a test stretch of our own road. I'll uh, just give this a position the camera and give it a quick render. So, thank you for watching this tutorial. 
and be sure to check out the next tutorial. This time we're actually going to be making one of the game levels.